Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. I normally do not narrate my mall videos, but I decided since this is a special occasion, as this is the 1000 subscriber mark special, I figured it was necessary I go ahead and narrate this mall video for you guys of one of my favorite dead malls. Actually, I would say my favorite dead mall, because it's just such a surreal experience to come here. Every time I come here, I always get a surreal feeling thinking that I just shouldn't be in there. With how empty the mall is, it feels abandoned. Anyways, I'm sure you've guessed already, today we are taking a look at Forest Fair Village Mall, located in Fairfield slash Forest Park, Ohio. Now, today on this voiceover, we will cover some thoughts as well as some history on the mall. So, I'll let you enjoy some shots before I get into the history. To start off with history, the mall opened its doors on July 11th, 1988, originally with a big supermarket, B. Altman, Bonwit Teller, Parisian, Elder Beerman, and several other stores. The mall was developed by L.J. Hooker, who developed other malls. However, he planned for this to be America's first super mall. When the mall opened, it opened with 1.5 million square feet of retail space, and at the time was the largest mall in Ohio until the South Park Mall in Cleveland opened its doors in 1996. However, things were not all glorious for the mall, as starting off with the mall, it was going to struggle because two exits both east and west on I-275, you have the Northgate Mall to the west and Tri-County Mall to the east. At the time, those malls both rivaled over Forest Fair Mall, and Tri-County has now fallen into disrepair just like this mall. However, Northgate is still holding its own for the area. It is not thriving exactly. However, it is doing fine for the area. And I would say it's probably the most successful mall in this region of the I-275 Metro of malls.
So, as several other people have filmed this mall, during some past encounters from other YouTubers who have filmed this mall, there used to be a security vehicle that was parked in the parking garage and it got heavily vandalized. It was an old, I believe 2003 Ford Escape and the car got heavily vandalized, tons of stuff rode on it and it literally was just sitting rotting in this garage. I believe at around the end of 2018, the car was removed from the garage, which is pretty sad just because that car left a essential landscape of how this mall is just rotting away. But you can go see that car in other people's videos because I'm not the only person who has filmed this mall. There are several other people who have. So as I stated pretty early on, the mall was already facing trouble. B. Altman and Bonwit Teller left very early on into the mall's life cycle, and it's no surprise really. I'm sure that this area of Ohio was not ready for that type of retail with that much of a deluxe look and that much of a deluxe price point for retail stores in the area. So, the B. Altman was replaced by a Kohl's and the Bomwit Teller, I don't know if it was anything else, however, the last thing it was replaced with for sure was a Burlington Co. Factory. We are currently walking in the center court area on the second floor. So as we're walking down here on the bottom floor, it's a good time to add that while it said this was recorded on May 30th in the beginning, this video actually consists of two separate trips. The main portion of footage was done on May 30th, however, some of the footage was also recorded on February 28th. So two separate trips were consisted to make this video possible. This consisted of my third and fourth visits to Forest Fair Village. This is not my first time here. I have made past videos on this place. My first ever visit here being on the Saturday night weekend of Halloween of 2019. My second visit being on May 24th of 2020. So I'm used to what this mall is like, but every time I come here, it just feels surreal. It's crazy. Here we are looking at an elevator that I am hesitant of riding, however, you'll see later in this video I did end up riding it, but we will get back to looking up on the second floor now during the May 2021 footage from May 30th, because right now you're watching February 28th, 2021 footage. Right now we are about to transition back into the May 30th, 2021 footage.
So Forest Fair Mall has been sold several times. However, the biggest known one would be its first sale going over to the Mills Corporation in 2002. The owners spent $70 million to renovate and update the mall to make it from Forest Fair Mall to Cincinnati Mills. This is by far probably one of the biggest mall mistakes anyone has made. This was a huge flop. And ultimately, this is one of the reasons why the mall died, I would probably say. They updated the mall aesthetically and it really doesn't look that pleasing. Uh, just a bunch of random things hanging off the ceiling. And I will say the colorful palette looks pretty nice, but ju they just put a bunch of things on the ceiling and tried to make the mall look like some sort of weird cartoon atmosphere, which just didn't really fit, in my opinion. However, the mall would get sold once again in 2009, and the new owners did not have the rights to use the Mills name, so instead of calling the mall Cincinnati Mills, they changed the name to Cincinnati Mall. We are currently looking on the second floor right now, by the food court, entering neighborhood C. So I believe around this range is where the old Biggs supermarket was located. I don't know for sure, but I believe around this range it was. I have no clue when the Auntie Anne's closed. However, my guess is it probably closed within the last eight years considering the sign was still up there. Now, as we're approaching up here, this is the old PBS Kids playground. Now, if we look in my footage from February 28th, the playground was still closed. But here in the May footage, it's open again. So that was pretty cool to see. It's not the only mall where I've seen a mall playground open up on this trip again. So it's cool to see that a lot of the old COVID restrictions are starting to drop. By 2010, pretty much the majority of stores from this mall ended up going to the newly built Cincinnati Outlet Mall in Monroe. Stores like Lane Bryant, Dress Barn, Off Fifth, those would go to the new Cincinnati Outlet Mall in Monroe. Now the last business operating in neighborhood C here is an old gym. I had some local gym health company that's operating over here at the end of Neighborhood C. They are only using exterior access, I believe. At least that's how it looked when I was at the mall. But it's odd to think that there's only five businesses operating in this whole mall. 2011, the mall was sold again and 
By 2013, the mall would go back to its original Forest Fair Village name. Since it was not stated already, the Parisian was replaced with a Bass Pro Shops, which still operates to this day. And I am surprised the Bass Pro Shops has not relocated anywhere else. So none of the escalators work anymore. They're practically just used as stairs. However, somehow the elevator does still work. You'll see that later in this video. But we are now downstairs. Something interesting with this mall is not only is there a police substation, as you see on the left, but straight ahead, there's another cinema. But we saw a cinema earlier in this video. This mall has two cinemas. Well, it had two cinemas. Both of them are closed. But there were two cinemas. This one was called The Screens at Cincinnati Mall. And if we look in my February footage, you can tell that it closed not that long ago. I'd say within the past five years, because like movies like Paddington are in here, Pitch Perfect 2. Those are not that old movies. Anyways, we're coming up on the food court here. Nothing's open in it. Half of the lights are off. Actually, I'd say more than half the lights are off. And... I'll play a spot from my video in February, and you can hear the, floor is literally the floor. There's a certain spot that's I crumbling couldn't. in the floor, which reminded me a lot of Fort Steuben Mall, with how their floor is just crumbling everywhere. The one spot in this mall has it. Here, you could just see a huge gap in the floor, just in a random spot here. That's pleasant. Over to the right side, you can see one of the uh, open stores that is still here, Arcade Legacy. And if we look in the February footage, I'll give you a quick tour of what it looks like inside.
So here's a little bit of story time. So just as a heads up for people, if you want to come to try to attempt to film here, uh, security absolutely hates people filming inside of here for some reason. I don't know why. Don't ask me. Normally, there's a Paul Blart who rides on a Segway everywhere in this mall. Now, me personally, I did not get caught, but my mom was graciously nice enough to try to take pictures in this mall for me. And she ended up getting caught because she took a photo right in front of the security guard while he was sitting in the office. So you'll hear in a second, we got yelled at by the security guard, but he somehow did not notice my camera. So I just continued filming. But uh, if you're going to try to film in this mall, be extremely cautious because otherwise you're going to get caught. Good afternoon. Hello. How are you doing? Hi. So, uh, you're not allowed to take pictures on the property? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So as you just saw, my mom got caught. At least this guy was polite about it, unlike the guy at Ashtabula Town Square who was an absolute a-hole about it. But as you see, I continued to keep filming. I, I just didn't care. I wasn't going to drive three and a half hours for nothing. So I continued filming. I got all the rest of the footage I needed and just left. That's the glory of using a hidden camera. But anyways... Um, we are currently walking in the Parisian wing on the bottom floor. You can see the old Bass Pro Shop sign up there. Uh, Bass Pro Shop and Kohl's do not use their mall entrances. You have to use their exterior entrances. So this mall did have a Babies R Us until Babies R Us went out of business in 2018. So that was there for a good while. Uh, the signs are still up on this Babies R Us. So I I'm honestly surprised they haven't taken them down, but I'm also not surprised just because of the state of this mall.
You can see buckets on the floor with holes in the ceiling as this mall is starting to suffer with water damage, which is really unfortunate. It's starting to turn into a lot of other malls. You could just tell the state of this mall here with how that is facing water damage in this wing. I believe the food court's also facing some water damage, if I remember correctly. I don't remember exactly. It's been a good while since I filmed both of these clips as I'm editing this video, but it's been a good little while for sure. And the water damage down here in neighborhood B in the Bass Pro Shops wing, it's been going on for a while. It's been doing it since my first visit here in 2019. We are now coming up onto the former Elder Beerman slash Stephen Berry's, and on the outside of this anchor store, it actually still has the Stephen Berry signage, which is pretty cool. So as we're coming up here on the Burlington Co. Factory slash Bonwit Teller on the second floor in the center court, once again, I figured I should probably tell another story. This is from my first visit here. When you come to this place at night, like when it's pitch black outside and it's raining on the weekend of Halloween, it is desolate. It is just surreal. It is so creepy just to walk through here at night, especially. But at night when it's raining, oh my gosh, it is creepy. It is so just unbelievable in your mind that something like this would exist publicly to even be accessible to the public. So that, that's just another story I figured I'd talk about. We're back up here on the second floor in the Coles wing now. And... We're going to head back toward Coles so we can wrap up the tour. So here's another note of info if you come to this mall. All the signs on the outside still say Cincinnati Mall, even though the place is known as Forest Fair Village. They never updated the signage ever since the Cincinnati Mall name change, so that's uh, as a notable thing for if you come here. Now, I don't often come upstairs in the Coles Wing, so seeing the bullet holes in the skylight up here, or just the cracked out windows, 
it may not be bullet holes but it's probably just cracked out windows it's creepy and just odd to see that too but anyway On yourself, on your faith, on your dreams, on your mind, on your health, yeah You gotta work, never tell, keep your head down, find what you love and excel, yeah Push and pull and repel any hate, go create what you want, feel compelled, yeah And once you finally get a taste of the race, you'll never look back once you felt that I'm actually really scared to ride this elevator This is one of the ones I hesitate on security standing like right outside of this thing so far actually it's not riding that bad all right let's hide this again come on please open up okay it actually is working yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video. It means a lot to me for you actually stopping by and watching this video. And I would really like to thank you guys for 1,000 subscribers. It means a lot to me. And it encourages me to keep making videos here on the channel. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Until next time, have a good day, everyone.